I have to confess that writing maintainable code was hard until the moment that I finally got what coupling and cohesion mean. Those two metrics alone mean a lot about the maintainability of your source code. And that's why it's so important to know them well. And that's why in this video I will explain what is coupling and cohesion, why should we care, where coupling happens inside of our systems, and how to improve our code to be loosely coupled and cohesive. Coupling and cohesion are two extremely important metrics. And the interesting thing is that they have a relationship between each other. And you need to achieve a given level of balance between them in order to have your system in harmony. And you might have heard that we need a system that is loosely coupled and high cohesive. What will we gain with that? So at first the code will be easier to maintain because code is co-located so same concepts or concepts related will stay together so they can change together. But also extremely important the flexibility by having a system that is cohesive and loosely coupled, you can be sure that you can refactor internals without affecting the rest of the system. You can swap a complete module without impacting the whole system. So as you can see, those two metrics alone are extremely important for maintainability. But now let's dig deeper. Let's start by talking about coupling. Coupling is one of the concepts that I talk on my new clean code course, but we'll talk more about that later. So what is coupling? Coupling is a metric that says how much two parts of our systems depend on each other. By that description, if we think about our systems as modules, you can think about coupling as a kind of like if two different modules need to depend on each other to work, coupling is that. And one thing that is important to know is that we always have coupling. We strive to reduce the level of coupling, but we can't avoid it. And that's why we refer to coupling as loosely coupled to tightly coupled, or sometimes you might say low coupling and high coupling. Any of those terms mean the same thing. So it's like if you were turning a knob and you want to move it to the low part, because when we are in the max level, when we have high coupling, we are in a big ball of mud, for sure and we want to avoid that, so you want to turn the knob to the other side. That's our goal. If this description didn't make sense, let's try with an analogy. Imagine a restaurant kitchen. A restaurant kitchen has several stations. Each station has one responsibility. So coupling is related to how independent are those stations from each other. Let's try with an example. If you have a grill station and a salad station and they work independently, they don't depend on each other, the kitchen can flow naturally. If something goes wrong with one station, we have the flexibility to try to work around that difficulty without impacting the rest of the stations inside of our kitchen. However, if our grill station depends on our salad station, what might happen is that a delay or a problem that happened, a given mistake, will delay the complete flow of the kitchen. And that will impact not only one client table, but it might impact several tables in our restaurant. So we'll deliver a poor experience to our clients. And all of that will lead to unsatisfaction either on the clients, but also inside of the kitchen, because it will create a lot of stress. The same happens with software that dependency between stations, often you see that between classes, between modules. But we can't talk about coupling without mentioning cohesion. And what is cohesion? While coupling will measure how different modules of our system, different classes, relate to each other, they connect to each other, cohesion is about one of the classes alone, is how the internals of that class work together, how well they fit, if they have the same goal. And in the same way as coupling, we measure cohesion as a scale from low cohesion to high cohesion or strong cohesion. So low cohesion will be something like imagine a class that has many responsibilities. This relates to the single responsibility principle. The typical case on this side of the spectrum is those utility classes that you create and you fit every single thing inside that. And on the other side, you have strong cohesion. As an example, imagine having a specific function that is only responsible to calculate the square root of a number. That can live alone in isolation from the rest of the world, doesn't need to depend on a lot of things, as a clear responsibility, a clear goal. And how can we achieve this level of cohesion? Mainly with two things. It starts with naming. Giving proper names is the first step to drive the design of a class to have low coupling 
and eye cohesion. Because if I name it with something specific, I have a natural tendency to only add there the things that belong to that specific thing. And how do I define that specificity? By applying the second technique that is grouping our features, our behaviors of our system together. Instead of grouping things by technical concepts like repositories, services, model views, controllers, all those things, what you need to do is to group them by a given functionality, by a given behavior. Is what we call the functional cohesion. But once again, let's try with the kitchen analogy. What would be cohesion inside of a kitchen? Having eye cohesion inside of a kitchen would mean that you would have a team that has the skills, has the tools, and they have a clear purpose. They are all aligned with the goal of serving high quality food to our customers. Everyone knows the role that they need to play. It might be chopping vegetables, it might be cooking the meat. What they know is that they have a role to fulfill. They have the tools, they have the skills, and they can work together to provide good experience to the client. Now imagine that inside of that team, you have multiple goals, multiple concerns. You have that goal of serving high quality food to the clients that are waiting on the dining room, but also you have the goal of taking phone calls to take note of takeaway, or at the same time, they need to serve through a drive through they have many things going on and now it will create friction to the process. They are not working together towards a single goal. The same happens with software. When you have a class, a module that is performing several things with different goals, naturally it will be hard to maintain it. It will be hard to evolve. It will be hard to adapt. And now you might be wondering, do I only have coupling inside of classes? No, you can have coupling everywhere. You can have in functions, you can have in classes, you can have in modules, but also you can have coupling between services and APIs, or even in your architecture. And naturally we find ways to avoid that coupling. As an example, if we are talking about those services that are coupled to each other, we create systems using things like messaging communication to avoid that coupling. If we are talking about the architecture of our systems, or for example, being coupled to a given cloud provider, we create systems and we adopt systems like, for example, Docker and Terraform to avoid the coupling to the specifics of that technology. All of that is coupling. But today, what I want you to take from this video is how to improve your source code to avoid coupling. And let me show you how to refactor code to be loosely coupled and cohesive. But before that, since we are talking about simple and maintainable code, let me tell you that I have a new course available at DomeTrain. In this course, we'll start with a code base with a lot of problems. And then we will refactor that code base to improve it. And all of that while we learn the principles of clean code. If you are ready to start this journey, go to DomeTrain.com and use the promo code CleanGee to save 50%. You can find the link in the description. Let's think about a common example. Imagine that you are processing payouts and one option is on your method that generates the payout. You open a CSV, you go line by line, you read each line and you use the data from those lines to perform the calculations while you start storing data somewhere like in a text file or in a database or even sending an email. By doing this, your system is becoming too coupled. Your logic of generating the payout is depending on the CSV file, the logic of reading and processing a CSV file, and also on the logic to store that thing somewhere like in a text file or in a given database. But we can refactor this system to be loosely coupled. And how can we do that? We basically refactor our source code as a kind of like a pipeline where we have multiple responsibilities and where each component doesn't need to know the implementation of the other one, the next one or the previous one in order to perform its task. If you have a first task that collects the data and provides the data to the calculation and the calculation provides the data to an output generator and it doesn't know type of generator that it is, you have that loosely coupled system. That means that you can easily swap the implementation of, for example, the reader. If you now need to collect data, not from a CSV file, but from an API or from a database or from an Excel file, you can do it. Or if now you want to output the data to a PDF, 
you can do it as well. And you can achieve this by applying several techniques, like the following ones. The first technique starts with design of our classes. One way to improve the source code is by moving functions to the place where the data lives on. So instead of having a function working with properties and data from a different object, we can move that function inside of that same object. Another technique that we can apply is to often provide two functions instead of providing an object providing the data needed. We can also apply design patterns like the facade or factory, but more than that, the dependency injection principle is an excellent way to avoid having a highly coupled system. Because when you use inversion of control, what will naturally happen is that you will depend on a contract, on an interface, instead of the real implementation. You can also use data structures to help you achieve this level of interdependency between different modules of your application. One example might be using something like a queue in the middle of two objects that depend on each other, so this way you create an abstraction in the middle of those. And now the communication will happen through a common data structure that we use in software. But also we have another tool that is abstraction. We can create abstractions trying to avoid the coupling between the systems, or we can even use metaprogramming to do that. But all of that has a cost. That abstraction might be what takes you to the extreme level of low coupling in your system. However, do that carefully because that will come at a cost. I would even say that it will impose a risk to your system. And if you want a video on that, on that risk of the abstractions, please leave a comment below. As now you can see, understanding cohesion and coupling can massively improve your source code. But let me tell you one thing, it will not have as much impact on you as having a good safety net of tests in place. So now take some time to watch this video right here where I will introduce you to test-driven development.